Thanks for tuning in. Today we're putting in the wheel well liners on my 2020 Ram 1500. Um, hope you enjoy. <laughs> the mistake of not buying ram liners like the factory like these on your rim okay so what do you do right you live in new england where there's salt in the roads or you just live somewhere where there's a lot of rain or water moisture gets in there and you're worried about rusting your bed what you're doing when you're putting these liners in is you're protecting your bed of your truck your suspension your frame your exhaust even because it's right there um, really any exposed metal will rust if it's iron really and it will especially in New England where it's salt and it's abrasives and rocks and chips and all that stuff as soon as the bare metal is exposed it will start to rust and it'll just bubble and paint under underneath and you know what I'll pay 89 bucks versus a new truck bed and have somebody replace it so to me it's worth it and to you obviously it is too because you're watching the video. Just a couple weeks after I got the truck I got these aftermarket um, flaps just to help with rock chips and stuff and it really has. Um, I noticed there's a noticeable difference with tar on the road and rocks and stuff but um, I do live in New England so I am worried about salt on the roads and and all the, the moisture getting trapped inside because I this is not a garage kept car this stays outside all year round. Um, so we did get some rough country ram liners and no we're not sponsored um, but it was just a good deal figured we'd jump on it and we're gonna put them on today and this is how we're gonna do it so your first thing we're gonna do to get these on is you have to wash the liners out completely and so there's no debris or moisture left in them so you're gonna have to wash them thoroughly and then dry it thoroughly you don't want any water in here because that moisture will get trapped and it probably will develop rust. Rough Country was nice enough to send some directions with us. So I'll, I'll go through these two while I'm doing it, but mostly you'll just hear me do it and I'll show you how to do it. And I'll walk you guys through it. But um, yeah, it's pretty. it looks pretty simple. You just need a couple little tools and just some a little elbow grease to get them in there, but you do not have to take the wheel off, which is honestly, in my opinion, very nice. Just because you don't have to jack the truck up and it's just a whole process, so. We'll start with that, we'll get the wheel liners washed, and that's it. So, you just finished washing the inner liner of your truck and drying it. Make sure it's very dry before you move on to this step. So, for this step, you will need a 5 16 ratchet. Um, that's just to get the little bolts off in here. These two, these right here, and all these. You will have to loosen them just to pull them up a little bit just to fit the liner underneath this body line. Um, also, if you do have any um, aftermarket mud flaps like I do, you have to take these off first and then you sandwich them. So this has to come off. And what I thought was interesting was as I was taking this off, you can actually see all of the dirt and mud that's stuck in here. Um, yeah, look, if you look on the top, this is after, I'd say maybe uh, nine months of driving with this car. All the dirt that's stuck in here and all this. So you definitely want to clean that out. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Once you have these off, you can move on to the next step. So with these factory flaps, you do need to clean underneath here. So there's a bunch of little dirts, like little rock specks and stuff. So you just get your finger back there and kind of just scoop them out you don't have to get everything but just try and get most of it um just so when it goes back on it's just cleaner and you don't have to worry about it chipping and scratching your paint so make sure to do that before you move on to the next step just grab your 5 16 wrench and you have to pull off this first little bolt right here that's holding on the front little liner here you have to take that off and make sure to save it it will go back on in a couple more steps so just take it off and put it somewhere where you're not going to lose it so the next thing you have to do is loosen the eight screws around this body line right here this these screws this one this one this one this one you have to take off these screws here if you have a aftermarket fender flap so that's what i did so i just took these off you'll have to loosen the remaining bolts though 
So you have to loosen this one, this one, this one, and this one, and this one. If you do not have an aftermarket flap, these bolts just need to be loosened all the way around. Don't take those off. I only took them off because I had to take that off. So that's, that's why. So just do that now and you'll be ready for the next step. So at this point, you're ready for the liners. Um, you're gonna wanna look at the top here. It's stamped DS and PS. Um, we just happen to start with the passenger side. So we marked the one, grab PS, stands for passenger side, DS driver side. Um, and this is just gonna go in kind of, you gotta kind of work it in a little bit, but you do not have to take the wheel off. I mean, I could imagine it would help, but you, it doesn't specify in the direction that you have to. Um, so you just, you know, make sure there's nothing on it, inspect it before you put it in, make sure you like it, because if it is damaged, I'm sure you can go get a new one before you put it in. Um, see, I just found another sticker, make sure they're all off. Um, yeah, so you're just going to want to put it in through here, make sure you have the right side, and make sure this is all dry and everything, just inspect it one last time, feel around, if you feel any moisture or any anything that should be raising concern you should look at it before you put this in um so you should want to slide this in and not hit your truck with it and once it's in there you're going to want to push it back and want to back it in and how we loosen all the bolts around here you're going to want to kind of slide it in Slide it in on the top, slide it in in the back, push it up, push it in, make sure it goes in, push it in through here, everywhere, make sure it's going in. And it could help to have a friend around or just somebody to help with you. Um, my friend helping me is recording right now, so I have the luxury of doing this by myself. Um, I'm sure it can be done because I'm about to do it but it would be nice to have somebody. So once you have that, you just wanna get it in there, make sure it's behind this body line. You don't want it in front, but behind the body line, um, then you will mark it with the little clips that they put in, in the front. Oh, I'm sorry, you wanna put them in the rear hole that's pre-drilled towards the back of the truck, and then you wanna put that in. And then the bolt you took off inside there, in the first step or the second step, you want to put that back into. And that's really it. That's the whole thing to how to put your liners in. So that's the complete guide. So we just spent like 20 minutes doing it the hard way because we didn't read the directions really. Um, so what you want to do is make sure you do the sides first, okay? Up to here, up to here and then do the top because it'll go much easier what we did is we just did the top sides and then whatever didn't fit we tried to make it fit and it didn't work so please just make sure you do the sides first then the top and now we're ready for the little pin that goes in here i don't know what it's, if it's not really a pin but it just expands as you push in and it'll hold the clip in place so you can see if you push this up there's a little hole right here pre-drilled hole you kind of have to put it in there like that you press it in there if it's not going in you have to pull this plunger out just a little bit more and hopefully i didn't break it but it should go like that um so you just want to push this in like so so it's flush and push this piece in and that's in then you want to come over here Remember how you took the little um, the little piece out? You want to grab the screw that you took out, in like the step first or second step, and you want to just push it in, and we'll find the bolt hole is where it was going in, and then we'll do it from there. So after you get this in and it's clipped in pretty good, you want to get these in along this body line, and then once you have one in, you want to hold it 
and then tighten it. So like for this one, I held it and pushed it in behind this body line and I tightened this one quick and then it held it just enough time for me to put these in. So I have to put in my aftermarket splash guards. Um, they just go right over like so. And then they go into these bolt holes and then that'll tighten this even more. So I just have to put these in and then do the other that other side too. So once you got this side in, you have to make sure once you're tightening them, not to over tighten them. They're just thin little sheet metal screws. They will strip and then once they strip, you'll have to take this whole thing out again and get new hardware. So make sure not to strip them. So this didn't fit quite right, but it is still will go on and it'll fit good enough to where I'm going to keep it on. Um, you can see it's not on right here, but I mean, if I notice it, I'll take it off and I'll fix it I'll modify it somehow but um, so yeah anyway you have to like I said previously you're gonna want to grab this and I just took the socket off the ratchet so I can just grab it quick so once you have this in here you want to press it in make sure it's behind these body lines right here and there it's in good then you want to take this <laughs> then you want to tighten it right up here so it holds it, holds it so you can do the rest of them. And you should feel it getting a little tighter, like that, hand tight. But definitely if it gets tight then loose, you know you did something wrong. So definitely once you feel it tight, don't push it too much. And then go over it with the ratchet click. Just make sure they're a little tighter and then you shouldn't have a problem with it also make sure to check that this one's tight and this is all the way in seated and then uh, that's it that's really it it's a pretty easy process just takes a little bit of elbow grease the hardest part is actually just getting it in here easy parts putting it all back together so that's all tight now I'm just gonna go over it with the ratchet click make sure they're all good Like I said, not too, too tight, just enough. It's good. This one right here. And this one right here. This one's a little looser. Okay, now this one. See, this one wasn't even tight, so that's why. It's a good thing to check your work. Okay, a tighter, it's all good. This is seated well, nothing's moving. Nothing's gonna fall out while you're driving. Just make sure, double check it. And to me, I think this looks like a little better because you don't have the white bed contrasting in the wheel well. So not only is it a performance piece where you get all of the benefits of having a liner, uh, you know, rust, there's no rust on your bed, you don't have to worry about any rock chips or anything. Um, it just looks better. Too. Thanks for tuning in guys, um, make sure to subscribe, uh, be on the lookout for new videos every week really, um, we're working on them constantly like today. Um, make sure to check out our website garagetoys.com for all of our custom shift knobs, we'll hook you up. Hey fellow YouTubers, check out garagetoysllc.com where you can see our full selection of custom shift knobs for any make and model car. We offer many different materials and colors to fit everyone's needs. All of our shift knobs are manufactured here in the USA by fellow auto enthusiasts just like you and can be shipped all over the world. Thanks for visiting.